Welcome to TA Tech. So, I've been getting a lot of comments on my videos regarding the Steam Deck guides I post about Windows. So, most of the comments are regarding the handheld companion. Um, some people are experiencing issues such as double input or they don't know how to set it up in general. So, in this video, I'm making a full guide about how to set up the handheld companion and get the best out of it. Also, it's worth mentioning that the ASUS Song Ally is coming out this month and the Army Crates the game launcher and the side panel of course are getting a launch with it so we're going to try to extract those from the isos rug line to put on the steam deck to have a better windows experience so without further say let's get started okay so now let's switch to my steam deck which has the handheld companion running in the background so if you don't have that installed on your steam deck check the link in the description below for the installation process so by default, the handheld companion will not leave a window in the taskbar. It will be in the tray because it runs in the background. So here we have it running. And the first thing we will adjust is our vibration. So the vibration level by default is on 30%. I suggest you leave it on there because I've tried it on different levels and it feels unnatural or it feels much harder than the actual vibration of the Steam Deck on the Steam OS. And the second option will leave on because this will make the controller vibrate when it connects so we know the controller is uh, connected and next we have the desktop layout basically this will let you control the steam deck with the buttons on the desktop so when you're in the windows environment you can change the buttons to control functions in windows i leave it to default i don't really use that uh, very much let's go to the next one and see what we have so and what we have next is hide the controller and connect this will hide the controller once it's connected uh, to the handle companion i leave this off just to avoid any errors and the next one we have is unhide the controller and close with this one i'll leave it on just to avoid any errors i found that when i leave it off sometimes i have some errors that i can't explain so the last one is very important this will mute the controller from the steam app so the steam app doesn't need handle companion you can play without the handle companion so you don't get double input turn this on the next one is the profiles i don't really use those you can set a profile for each game this will change the features of the app based on the game that you're running i'll leave this I don't really use this functionality at all and then we have the overlay I don't really use that uh, very much because I prefer using the hotkeys they are much more intuitive they're easier to use so let's go to the hotkeys this is the most important part to be honest with the handheld companion it will make your experience so much better so let's set this up and look at our options uh, so the first one and the third one I used together so I set up the options key to trigger both of them together so let's see here what it does so if you press the options key you will get a 3d controller representation and you'll get this menu and it is a very useful menu for you to use inside the game it has useful options for example changing the tdp the refresh rate the resolution and the clock speed for the gpu also here we have a bunch of useful options for example the first one is the desktop layout you turn this off and the mouse and the buttons will turn off this will guarantee there is no double input inside your game and once you're done playing you can touch it to turn it on and you can control the windows with the mouse and the keys again just make sure you use this option when you play games so you don't get double inputs. The other option we have here, it gets you the action center so you can change the Wi-Fi, the brightness or anything that you want from inside the game, which is very useful. So we talked about how you can change the TDP from that menu, but you can also change it with a hotkey. So I've set the hotkey here. I'm going to show you it's in action. So if you go to performance and you turn on the TDP controls, now I press the options. And the left analog stick to the right and this will change the TDP for me going up. I set another one if you want to go uh, down with the TDP. So if you press it, so if you press the left analog stick to the left and then with the option key, the TDP will go down as well. Just avoid using the TDP control in the multiplayer games that support anti-cheat. So the next one is really useful. So you can show the keyboard while you're inside the game. I set uh, the option key and the steam key press together, show you the keyboard inside the game. This is very useful for the games that you need to put input inside the game. So the next one is also useful. If you want to go to the desktop from a game and you're stuck in that game, you can press the option key and the down key and will take you to the desktop itself. So make sure you set it to the keys that you like. So the next one will show the task manager. I set it to option and up. They will show you the task manager while in the game. This is also useful because sometimes you want to close tasks in the background while you play in the game. So the next one I have here is to kill the app. So if the app is frozen or you just want to completely kill it, I set uh, pressing the select key and the stock key together and it will close the app completely with the task so it's not gonna be using any RAM. So the next ones here have been disabled uh, for me so the 
so the quiet mode the both lizard mode so the lizard modes now are in the desktop layout button that we showed earlier from the menu on the side so you don't need these anymore so and these will have the custom ones so if you want to make a custom keyboard shortcut you can make it and name it yourself so so this is if you want to add extra functionality so let's go to the settings menu now and see what we have there so make sure you scroll up of course uh, it was scrolled down for me so make sure you check for updates just to make sure you get the latest features for this app and the bug fixes next we have automatic start this will start the handheld companion right when windows starts i use this uh, option i leave it on because i use handheld companion a lot the next one is to have it in the background so when you have the app closed it's gonna go to the tray instead of going to the taskbar a lot of people saying the app has disappeared and they can't find it that's because it goes into the tray instead of the background and this is done by default on this app next one leave it on if you want to control the desktop by the mouse and the buttons okay so let's scroll down a little and we have the startup type this is basically the type of service that you want to start so basically what kind of controller you want to connect at the start of the handheld companion and when it's connected and then after that we have the start with companion so basically this will connect the service right away when you start your handheld companion companion and then you have the halt with handheld companion this basically will turn off the service as soon as you close up your handheld companion okay so we got to our last four uh options that really matter so the first one is smart efficiency so this one is a new efficiency mode that is made by windows so basically what it does it prioritizes the background processes to improve energy i've used it it's nothing really to brag about it doesn't really do that much improvement the next one is the tdp override so if you want to override the tvd settings for the steam deck if you want to go above the 15 watts or the uh, to 20 watts, 24, um, 40 watts if you want, but uh, I don't recommend playing with this one. I don't know. I I, I don't want to stress my Steam Deck above its capabilities. To be honest with you, uh, I think it will overheat and it will cause some damage. So I'll just um, I leave this off. I didn't never use it. Um, the next one is the fan override. As you can see the slide that does not work because you need to turn on the options above it, and then you'll have the slider working and there are some concerns that saying you could get a ban using this um i don't really control the speed of the fan so if there is a game with entity just don't use the fan controls on it i guess so that's it for me guys i really hope that you enjoyed the steam deck handheld companion full guide and comment below if you have any concerns if you like this video give it a thumbs up and if you like the channel subscribe and peace